Welcome to Earth Plays Champions of Quinn. When last we left off, we had just ventured outside the outpost for the first time and encountered draconians, and discovered that, in fact, this area is more dangerous than reputed, and also the commandant of this outpost had been replaced by a Sivak draconian. So let's see if we can learn anything new in the bar. Tavern Tale 19 this time. That would be... Draconians have been seen near Throttle. Things are heating up. Well, I just said that, so... Tavern Tale 37 is... The Draconians followed by an Aurac. They're very deadly. Uh, an Aurac Draconian comes from a Gold Dragon Egg. They can cast h relatively high level spells. Mind Control. And when they die, they first go berserk instead of actually dying, and then a few rounds later, explode. So, if we had been attacked by an Aurak, we would certainly have died, but luckily, the Aurak that was there teleported away instead of sticking around to fight. So, Tavern Tale 2 is... Even giants are being seen nearer the outpost. Glad we have some rangers and dwarves in the company. Rangers and dwarves have combat bonuses against giants in this version of D&D. Tavern Tale 22? Throttle is starting to crawl with monsters. Some of our scouts have been harassed. Well, that's fairly ominous for our plans to go there. And again, four tavern tales and we're done. So now we leave the outpost. We do not go into the outpost. That is actually where we are, that square. And that is throttle. I got confused about where we actually were last time. But, into Throttle we go. Yes, I enter. And, looky this, unfriendly hobgoblins. Well, we certainly aren't turning around and leaving immediately, so I guess we're going to fight. Also, it's only off-limits to us if we agree it's off-limits to us. Oh, hobgoblins. Okay, so let's see where to target this. Oh, these icons for my characters. I'm... Unfortunately, of all the things I like about the gold box games, the combat graphics aren't really among them. So, these icons are just chosen with an eye to being able to tell the characters apart, really. Those are hobgoblins. They have four hit points. Hobgoblin leaders with nine hit points. And warriors, that's a human fighter, with 18 hit points. So, let's see what happens if we put the sleep spell there. Affected five targets, nice. Let's see to it that this warrior never, well, actually wait. First round, Lisa will taunt everyone. No, 
now alone can cast sleep too. Yeah, that's a good place. Oith can't cast any spells this round because he took damage. That also applies to enemies and is something to be remembered. If you take damage, you cannot cast a spell in the same round. Now, let's make sure this warrior never wakes up. Reduced to negative 10 hit points means killed. Reduced to zero hit points means just unconscious. Reduced to anywhere from negative one to negative nine means you'll take damage until healed or bandaged. Someone is helpless, like asleep or paralyzed from hold person, then any attack aimed at them will automatically reduce them to negative one hit points and produce that message. this battle, but we have quite a bit of healing magic. Yeah, I don't think we actually need the money enough to take those broadswords, which should make this easier to watch anyway. Orth is, a cleric, Orth is a cleric of Reorks, and thus has no enhancement on his healing spells. Desia is a cleric of Mishakal, so she does have enhanced healing spells. Observe. From 3 to... 6. That's very enhanced, as you can see. From 6 to 14, rather more like it. Okay, and we can move on now, actually. The question is, do we go north, west, or east? Let's actually say first, and then head east. Journal entry 38, which says, they're back, back there. Who, look out. No, no, no. I stabbed one, but it took my sword. I couldn't get it out of its body. Karaman. His eyes clear for a moment, and he becomes more lucid. Listen to me, he says. They've captured Karaman. Most of our party has been wiped out. He suddenly jerks about. What's that? Get them. They've got Karaman. Find him. I'll find him. North, north, and west, and south. Traps! Back up. Go.
go back now. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Look out, above you. Oh no, oh no, oh no. He gets a sly, slightly mad conspiratorial look on his face. I saw a money chest in a room to the east. I'm going to get it and I'm set. He looks around and leans toward you. You want to help? Huh, what'd you say? The terrorized look comes back. He screams and gasps in terror. And having done that, he apparently runs away, somewhat unheralded. That is the bar's draconian. Those are words I don't like. Death Knight. I definitely do not want to meet a death knight anytime soon. But right now, this is more warriors, more hobgoblin leaders, and two bars draconians. Despite their lower hit points, I am inclined to think the bars draconians are the most dangerous ones here. Oh, also, fun fact all draconians have magic resistance, meaning that. Even spells which don't have saving throws can just not work on them sometimes. So let's see who this sleepful effect here. Well, it affected the boss that time. That is good. Also, I don't believe draconians count as humanoids, so hold person would not work on them just for that. Surprising failure of magic resistance that both bars draconians were immediately put to sleep. And can now be shot without a risk of losing melee weapons. No, do not actually attack him. And she doesn't have... Right, she's so much slower than the rest because she has plate armor. So they will get slower as their armor gets better, unfortunately. Draconians down. No one will be losing weapons here. This is good. will take the steel pieces and more items which we will leave there. Oh, move is obvious. Area does that. It brings up that view of the area, but it doesn't show any doors or encounters or anything like that. Cast is to cast a spell here. View is to look at a character sheet. And camp is to make camp right there. Search turns on search mode, which means I look for anything hidden in every square I move through, but also means it takes 10 minutes to move through each square. And look searches the square I'm in right now, taking 10 minutes. More 
are hobgoblins. And the generic description indicates that these are wandering monsters. So, Lisa will taunt them by bringing up the futility of their existence. items I could take and I'm not. So, save game can only do that in camp unfortunately. Oh, this game also has a difficulty level. Right now it's on veteran where it started dead in the middle and there it will stay. You get more XP on higher difficulty levels and less on lower. through the wall in the southwest corner of the room. That is something to remember. And clerics. Those are potentially dangerous, so... See if we can hit one of them with my hooper. Good. That one will not be casting any spells this round. one enemy they'd have a fair uh, penalty to the saving throw, but this worked out just fine with one cleric paralyzed and the other one asleep. Lisa will still taunt those last two hobgoblins who are up to fighting. Chainmail is better than ringmail, and at the moment, that matters. So, Emma Class 2 becomes Emma Class 0. I'll just drop that ring. And yeah, you can't come back and get anything you drop. It just ceases to exist. So. Monsters attack. Ack. That is a rat. Giant rats are, I do believe, literally the weakest enemy in this entire game. But giant centipedes, while they are easier to hit and have no more hit points, are poisonous, which can make them very dangerous indeed. And I'm pretty sure I can't taunt any of them because they're 
you know, not sapient. When a fighter is adjacent to enemies with less than a full hit die, like giant rats and centipedes, they can make a number of attacks equal to the fighter level by sweeping. Up, I should say, a number of attacks up to either the number of enemies they're adjacent to, one against each, or equal to their fighter level, whichever is less. So, three attacks if I can get adjacent to three of them, which I could only do if I moved away from these two, each of them would get a free attack at me if I did that. So, instead, I will settle for just attacking two of them. I can abort my entire movement, as you just saw. Not a very dangerous fight, and also not one worth very much XP, unfortunately. So, they ran through the wall. Yep, that wall. And there is money here. Jewelry is more valuable than gems. Jewelry and gems both have variable values, and 250 steel pieces. And Take ten minutes looking in case there's something else here. There is not. So then, follow whoever it went through here. Okay, well. Now, let's go north, this way. where I just was. Let me check. Yes, that is where I just was. So, nothing that way now. Let's see what's this way. Further north, lots of... They're not called archways. That's what they're called. I wanted to say alcoves for some reason. Lisa was able to pick the lock. That is good. Can she do it again? She can't. So, Cyrus then will have to break it down, and then we get shot at, but all the arrows miss. Okay, a soldier approaches and wants to parlay. Journal entry 35 is... I was with a party of knights and others under Caramon that came in here to explore. We haven't really found anything. Caramon's already left to report. I guess you must have missed him. Oh, one thing we did find out was that there is a treasure left over from the previous occupants of Throttle. We got word of it from a hobgoblin who was sneaking in to claim it. Before he died, he told us that it was located in the south-central area of the city. Tell you what, if you help me find this treasure, I'll split it with you. All right. This guy is not... Incredible in the least. So, I'm going to say no. Yep, as you can see, he is in fact working for the dragon armies. He has more, a lot more hit points than anything we've encountered yet, with 42 to a warrior's 18. So let's, but his companions are five basic hobgoblins, so let's see if a hold person will work on him. You're up, Eryx. So 
Ariston will love spellcasting later as a knight, but she doesn't yet. Nope, can't reach him. Too far away. Inconvenient. Should have moved closer. That is something to be careful of in this game, spell ranges. And then they all made their saving throws just to add insult to injury. Orth can't cast a spell. Be sick and taunt. See if sleep will probably not work on the soldier, but it might. That would be a predicted no. Not a big problem, just very definitely inconvenient. Lisa will deal with it right now, actually. Dying means she's between negative one and negative nine hit points and will lose one hit point per round until this happens. Now she's up to 12 hit points, but still unconscious for the rest of the fight because she got knocked out. And yet yeah, Eryx is likely going to need to prepare spells after this anyway, so we'll try. Yep, he is paralyzed. Did he have? Ah, yes. He had plate mail. So, now Orth does. And did he have anything magical? He did not. So, his long sword and shield can just stay there. And the chainmail Orth was using gets traded to Eryx. Who discards his ring. And yeah, we have a couple people hurt, Orth and Desia. Skeletons, uh... In this game, skeletons who are turned, undead who are turned, I should say, are assumed to automatically escape, since presumably you wouldn't have turned them if you were then going to try and stop them from running. Hit him, good, now he can't cast a spell this round. Magic is still active. Magic shield, magic potion, two cleric scrolls. Nice.
the trick here, of course, is that, that until I actually have them identified in town, I don't know if these things are in fact cursed, the magic ones, that is. The chainmail is safe. And so are the scrolls, because I know what those are. I don't actually need to rest quite yet. Orth has the scrolls. Two neutralized poisons and two neutralized poisons. Okay. A candor. His remarks are. So, at last, you've come to rescue me. You know these things are quite clever. Not clever enough for me, of course. I've just been improving them somewhat. Oh dear, I do hope you didn't come through from the north. Oh, sorry. I suppose you'll be wanting to get me out of here now. Oh, there are more people back there. Strangborn is around here somewhere. He's looking for Karam. Oh, you want to find him? Well, that's an interesting story. You see, when we first got together, about two weeks ago... Uh, I can help, you know. Karaman was taken somewhere south of here. I have been trying to reset traps in case more draconians and hobgoblins get here. Why don't we team up, okay? Okay. There is no reason not to, as there is, in fact, no such thing as an evil kender. This kender is chaotic good, and a thief, with a hooper. Because he is an NPC, I won't be able to control him directly in battle. But he is... loyal. Skeletons and giant centipedes and giant rats. I should have stepped north first, I could have attacked all three. But we won without taking any damage anyway. Okay, so now we go. Neither of our Kender could pick that lock. That was the trap killed if that well, he got caught in it, so can't really say that's not fair, can you, Kelderf? Buzz Draconian. Three Draconians and five warriors. So far, when you get a random monster encounter, it looks like that draconian image presages the worst. Much as possible, I want to use ranged weapons. 
rooms on those bars because even asleep they could still trap our weapons. And just basic equipment for the warriors. Nothing worth saving. A scroll which one of our white robe mages can use. That would be Desia or Lyra. scroll which our red mage can use, Eryx. what Strangborn says, Larson Strangborn specifically. I was with the patrol that followed Karaman in here. We ran into trouble almost immediately. We were not really expecting much opposition, but we were ambushed by a large force of hobgoblins and draconians. I was knocked out by a blow to the head early in the battle. I awoke in a dark corner alone. It took me a while to get my bearings, but I finally went out in search of my companions. I overheard from passing patrols that everyone except Karaman was killed. You must help me find Karaman. He must not be allowed to fall into the hands of the leaders of this band. It kind of sounds like he already did, but okay, we will certainly look for him. And yes, you can join us. Okay, he has more to say now, this time about Sir Carl. Listen, Sir Carl is the most honorable of men. I would follow him anywhere. But there is something very dark and strange going on around him. He seems obsessed with a young girl named Maya. The fact that he's about forty years older than she is isn't really the problem if they just settle down and declare themselves. All that would happen is that, that a few gossips will snicker and that'll be the end of it. But they won't do that. Maya is extremely valuable to us. She has sources of information that are astounding, especially for one so young. But whenever the two of them are in the same room, the tension is so obvious that... Ah, uh, never mind. You say that he seems to be all right. I will go on that hope, and let troubles find me in their own good time. Let's go. Well, what's going on there will certainly become clearer later. So, right now... Time to alter the party order, because Strangborn should be a little further up. I should also look at his stats. He is a fourth level Knight of the Crown, and like Saraston, has a long sword and plate mail and a shield. Ah, uh, copy protection. How annoying. Okay, now that we've done that, let's see what's through here. Lisa will attempt to disarm it. She disarmed it and got experience. Nice. Okay, 
so wait, this is the room where we met Kilber. So we should go this way. That's a picture of a warrior. That's a lot of rats. And two warriors and two skeletons. Turn the skeletons. Lisa turned them though. What exactly happens to enemies who are charmed after a battle is unclear in this game. They don't give you information. I don't believe they give you XP. Nor do you get their loot. They seemingly just evaporate when the battle ends. Blackrobe mage, cleric, bars draconians, this looks nasty is what it looks like. Let's see what sleep will do. Took out the mage. I can disrupt that casting. I did, yes, excellent. And yeah, after this fight, we should sleep for me. And when it pops up, Boz is unaffected like that on a spell that doesn't have a saving throw, it means magic resistance took effect. Possibly a bit late for it to matter, but I taunted that warrior anyway.
just reminded I should really be picking up backup melee weapons for certain people. doesn't have any bonus spells this time because the red moon is now at looks like waning half which gives him no bonuses actually cast the healing spells we have before trying to rest. Or I won't get them back. me. I should also have a couple of the wizards prepare read magic so they can translate their new scrolls. when he's high enough level to cast any of those spells, which is not yet. And Laren, meanwhile, can learn those when she's high enough level to cast any of those spells, which is not yet. And now, yes, let's see what's this way. Two wizards. Dangerous. One sli one waking wizard. Still dangerous. It is now asleep, though the damage has largely been done. Yeah, try 
trying to paralyze Caldorf now. He is more dangerous than any other enemy we're facing. Hold person. Looks like hold person would work on the bars if it had worked, but it didn't, so here we are. Last Draconian, and Keldor, if was trying one, is likely to knock down, yes. So much for those. And Keldorf is back to being loyal to us, which is good. And who still needs a backup weapon? Everyone after Desia. Lisa is not going to use any weapon, but a hoop pack, so there we go. Yeah, leave sounds like a really bad idea. But we also need to reach that cleric to shut them down before they cast a spell. They can't charm like the wizards can, but they can paralyze. No casting spells this round. Good. No spells this round. Or this round. And done. Oh, 
dot that string born gets a special icon which we unfortunately can't have. So we look considerably more ordinary. the generic equipment used by those people. After the battle, I was taken to see a powerful cleric. He laughed at my defeat. They led me to some doors that glowed in the darkness, opened them with a key that he pulled from his robes, and took me to a dark temple. I saw a bronze dragon egg on the altar. He told me that they were going to start the corruptions again. Then he had his minions beat me. I woke up here. If it hadn't have been for the treachery of a dark elf and a sneak attack from behind, they never would have captured me. He pauses. I'm sorry for my men, he says. They had no idea what we were getting into. Crin's blood, I didn't know either. We were unprepared for the extent of the evil forces. The ambush was a complete surprise. Okay, relevant dragon lance fact here. Dark elves aren't a race on Crin. They are, rather, elves who are outcast. Cast from the light, as they say. Usually, that means they're evil aligned. What's that? Weird noise. Someone very pale just showed up. Lovely elven woman. Journal entry nine. She explains to Karamon, I've been sent by Sir Carl to get you back to the outpost. There are rumors that large forces of draconians, hobgoblins, minotaurs, and others are gathering. We need you to direct scouting and raiding operations. I see now that things are worse than we thought. Throttle was supposed to be abandoned. Karaman says, it's even worse than that. I have seen brass dragon eggs. She gasps, no, they must not do this again. Then she pauses. Wait, how can they do it? I thought the process was lost during the War of the Lands. Did you see any evidence that they were successful? No, says Karaman. I was knocked unconscious before I had a chance to look further. He turns to you. I need you to investigate this matter. Find the key and go to the old temple in the northeast part of the city. Find out what you can. Okay. Well... Southwest corner of Throttle. And go from there to the northeast quadrant of the city. That was Maya. Wait, if she's a beautiful elven woman, then she is probably chronologically older than Sir Carl. 
though, sorting out what that means for the appropriateness of relationships, I'll leave to someone else. Thank you. And Calder and Strangborn leave. Both somewhat tattered, unfortunately, would have healed them if I'd known. They were about to leave, but as it is, here we are, and I will wrap up this video here. We will finish with this section of Throttle, anyway, next time. Thanks for watching, and see you then.